Hey everybody, welcome to another episode here. I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody. Uh, one for reaching 200 subscribers, that's absolutely enormous for me. So thank you guys so, so much. Absolutely appreciate it loads. Also, my last video, well, my last top five video, should I say, reached over 800 views so far. Again, massive thank you to everybody who's viewed it, everyone who's subbed from that as well. And just because of that, and because it was so successful, we're going to do another top five reveal here. This is top five Premier League teams that I would pick in Football Manager 2022. So let's go and have a look and see who I chose. <laughs> So guys, if you watch my last top five reveal, you'll notice that I put in two Premier League teams already in Brentford and Aston Villa. Now, I'm going to pick five separate teams in this video, so but I'll give them an honorary mention. So yeah, top seven. <laughs> I'll class it as a top seven, but no, nah, really, it's going to be a top five. And definitely those two teams are worth managing. But like I said, we're going to pick top five different teams to those two. So let's go on and see who we picked at number one. So guys, the first on the list is Burnley. Now the reason I picked Burnley is that they don't tend to really invest that much. Yes, they've got in Nathan Collins for 12 mil, and they have got a few freebies which include Aaron Lennon and Wayne Hennessy, but overall they really don't spend that much money. Um, and with the exit of Ben Gibson, um, you know, they've really, really only spent about 4 million technically speaking. Um, and I think it'll be a massive, massive challenge for the Premier League or for you to manage in the Premier League. I think that, you know, they've been kind of hanging on in real life now for the last few years. Uh, and Sean Dyche has done a really, really good, really, really good job at kind of, you know, keeping them in the Premier League. But can you take them further instead of just clinging on, you know, season after season? Can you take them further with very little investment? And I think it'll be a big, big challenge in Football Manager 2022 to do that. Um, obviously, the transfer window in real life hasn't actually closed just yet at the timing of this video. Whether they actually get anybody else in remains to be seen. I wouldn't imagine if they did it would be a huge investment anyway but yeah that is why they're on the list because I think without the, the investment um, and the fact that they've been hanging in the Premier League for quite a long time now it's just whether you can you know take them further and, you know, and that is the challenge so yeah that is why they're on the list so guys number two on the list is Norwich City newly promoted that's one of the reasons and another reason is because they have this habit of sort of going up and coming down and going up and it's like a vicious cycle and it's almost on repeat if that makes sense now can you take them over and can you stop this from happening can you you know go beyond uh, above and beyond and go and take them to Europe and, and, and even further um, and obviously with the ex of Wendy they've lost a really really talented player there but they did make a good fee for him and they've used that fee wisely and quite well I think they've definitely got a platform to build upon you know and as we mentioned in the previous team they have signed Ben Gibson and they've even signed Pierre's, uh, Pierre Lise Malou sorry uh, and a couple of others as well and I think they've got a platform to build upon and, and definitely um, a decent team they're not like a, you know the but in my opinion anyway they're not like the worst team I've ever seen in my life and I think they've definitely got that platform to build upon. Will they get much investment? We won't know, of course, until FM22 kind of comes out, um, or the beta at least. Um, but yeah, that is why they're on the list. Newly promoted, have this habit of going up and coming down, and it's just whether you can stop that. And obviously, about any newly promoted team is a challenge in the Premier League. But yeah, that is why they're on this list. So guys, number three on the list is West Ham United. Now, the reason I picked West Ham is they had such a storming season last season. They finished sixth and only two points behind Chelsea the top, on the, in the top four. Uh, and one point behind Leicester and I think that is absolutely fantastic and I think they've done a really really good job um, and they haven't really invested that much this season yet I think it's only Dawson for about two or three mil or something like that um, and they did get Ariola on loan um, from PSG which is a really really good signing in my opinion he had a fairly good season with Fulham um, and I think he'll do pretty well at West Ham. Now, there's a lot of talk now in real life at the timing of this video of uh, Lingard being linked with them um, and with the arrival of a certain somebody coming into the team. Um, I can imagine that West Ham will go in for him. I can't imagine they won't really strengthen before the transfer window ends. Um, so, yeah, we'll wait and see and find out what happens if they do get Lingard, uh, who, you know, again, had an absolutely crucial, crucial role in them getting into Europa League. Um, and I think, to be honest, they're a really, really strong side. And can Antonio break the record in the game like he has done in real life? Um, and can you take them on even further and get into that top four? I think they've got an absolute brilliant, brilliant platform to build upon. And that is why they're on the list. So, guys, number four on the list is a Leicester City. Now, the reason I'm picking Leicester is they've had a really, really good transfer window, in my opinion. One of the better transfer windows in the Premier League out of all the other teams. I mean, I know a lot of teams have made big signings and, and a lot of signings. Um, but for me, Leicester City have kind of not necessarily under the radar um, made, you know, signings, but kind of like definitely underrated in some regard because they've managed to get in Dakar, uh, Sumier, 
uh, Vestergaard. He's, a, he's okay. He's a decent player, and obviously Bertrand for free. And I think that's you know a fantastic set of players they brought in there. And that Sumier in particular is going to be an absolute handful for a lot of players to deal with. Um, and another reason is mainly because they they seem to always be on the cusp of getting top four, but they always seem to have like a really bad end to the season, sort of drop out. It's kind of like. You know, with Norwich coming up and down, and it's sort of like a, a bit of a thing that's on repeat for Leicester at the moment, where they, you know, they absolutely smash the league for eighty-five percent, ninety percent of it, and then all of a sudden, just that last little bit that they can't quite get over the line and get into the top four and break into that Champions League team, um, and it's going to be difficult. It's going to be very difficult with teams like Chelsea, Liverpool, you know, uh, Man City, Man United. You know, they're all going to be fighting for the top four. And there are others, others as well, of course. Um, I'm just picking them out of, you know, thin air at the moment. But, yeah, it's going to be very, very difficult for Leicester to kind of, you know, break into that uh, that, that sort of top four. And I've managed them in FM20 and FM21. Uh, and I've had a lot of fun with them, to be fair. They're, 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 they're a side that have got all the makings and all the, you know, that foundation to become a top, top team in the league. But they're not quite there. And it's just whether you can... You can turn them into that consistent title winning team. Uh, and like I say, they've had a really, really good transfer window and that is why they are on this list. So guys, number five on the list. We've left the big one till the end, Manchester United. Now the reason we've picked Man United is because of obviously Cristiano Ronaldo has rejoined the club. The absolute legend has come back and I cannot wait to see him in real life play into the Premier League once more. And I think obviously they've brought in Sancho and Varane as well, which is Brilliant, brilliant signings and a very, very good transfer window they've had so far. They haven't quite addressed that CDM problem that they have at the moment, but generally speaking, they have brought in some cracking players and I can see them scoring a lot of goals and I can see them challenging for the title. And I know it's obviously a very, very big team in the, in, you know, in the sense of you know, it's going to not necessarily be a challenge and you probably will get top four with them. But again, just like in the other top five reveal video when I said about PSG, this could be the starting point of a, of a sort of a glory hunter save. But yeah, that is why they're on the list because the big man in Cristiano Ronaldo has rejoined. And like I said, I just can't wait to see him play. Um, but yeah, that is why they are on the list. So guys, that is it for this episode. Thank you all for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with my top five or if there's anyone else that you prefer to manage. But yeah, thank you so much everyone and I will see you in the next episode.